I joined business, uh, I used to meet a lot of sales people and I used to be involved. They were in the early education. Someone was a science graduate, someone was an uh, uh, engineering student who didn't get enough marks. And by default, because he couldn't succeed elsewhere, he had joined the sales team. And from being an art army, even now come. You know, people have achieved great peaks just by liking people, interacting with people, building with people. So uh, there cannot be any substitute to a salesman. Even uh, WhatsApp company which was sold for billions know, and billions of dollars had 55 people who were actually their salesmen. So I would say that it's an evergreen job and more than that it's an evergreen passion. My take on this, uh, I've heard uh, you, you know, Charlie also, somebody saying death of a salesman. Now, in the tech world where everything is available in terms of information and codified information, you can go to sites which gives comparative analysis of, in fact, uh, you know, many of the youngsters choose a restaurant based on the rating of the restaurant, how many stars and things like that, which means that there is already information. <coughs> information about ambience and things like that. I think, uh, you know, if you are looking at the uh, job of a salesman only as a provider of information, then that particular dimension of the job has undergone a change. Who does the job of convincing and matching the customer requirement with what they have to offer? I think if machines or intelligent machines can take over that function, then it will be good, but there will be one limitation. The major limitation is machines will find it difficult. The intelligent you know, programs will find it very difficult to understand the emotional quotient of the buying situation of the customer. And that's where <laughs> a human being makes a big difference. Therefore, all that one uh, needs to understand is that the specific role of a salesman, what was there several years ago, has undergone a change to some completely different persuasive kind of a skill based on a completely different premise due to a difference in customer usage experience. That is what has undergone a change, not the role of a salesman. Therefore, that's what my take on it. I think uh, you'll be able to give you a practical about the context uh, uh, whether do we need sales uh, uh, or not. But I think now selling, now you really need salesmen for reason. Now choices are increased for a consumer. His expectations are increased. His Exposure is more, and uh, when choices are more, expectations are more, needs are more, real selling has become very, very difficult. You cannot fool your customer. He, I mean, if you want to sell, suppose a mobile to a customer, he knows everything, or she knows everything. So, diff job has become difficult. Sell. But then you have to come out with selling techniques which is out of data. You really know the good points about your <coughs> product. Selling stories are very good, then only okay. good. But otherwise, otherwise selling has, has become easier also for a salesman. Reason is that now you know much more about your customer or customer before you approach him with the knowledge on internet about leads you get, about on the fees pay or sort of thing. You can approach your customer in a number of ways, not only personally. You can sell yourself not only by one to one, but there are a number of ways to take. I, I, like he is talking about personal uh, experience. Let me tell you. <coughs> A salesman who is selling FMCG products like food products, selling to a shopkeeper, used to go to a shopkeeper, I'm talking about 20, 30 years back. He'll go there, he'll say, 
आप आपने पिछले एक महीने में क्या खरीदा वीक में क्या खरीदा कॉम्पिटिटर्स के बारे में हाँ क्या प्रोडक्ट लॉन्च हुआ है क्या प्राइसिंग है वहीं जाके ऑन द स्पॉट ही यूज टू गेट ऑल द इंफॉर्मेशन और ही यूज टू फर्स्ट गो टू दोसल डीलर गेट द इंफॉर्मेशन दैट व्हाट रिटेलर ऑन दिस बीट है परचेज द लास्ट वन मंथ और प्रीवियस ईयर मैंने ही यूज टू कीप ऑल दिस डेटा बट नॉट थिंग्स हैव चेंज और सेल्स में नेस ऑन टारगेट एज एन एनी इंफॉर्मेशन अबाउट द रिटेलर व्हाट ही हैज परचेज एनालिसिस और कॉम्पिटिटर्स इंफॉर्मेशन what do products have been gone and he knows everything before entering the shop and in fact he tell the shop people that yeah bhaiya aapka you are ordering six pieces but you have been selling nine pieces last one year see here is the data so this data will be the hands on will become very very good and what this is a make i think the coming that no doubt Now time has come for a good salesman who has got good knowledge and updated knowledge, and uh, it is going to be difficult. Selling is gradually is becoming difficult. It will be consumer has got more choices. I like to add a point here. I think uh, while I'm an optimist, I'm a Sagittarius. Sagittarius is supposed to be a blind optimist who thinks that even broken glasses can mend by themselves. But I see a terrible future for the economy, for business, for the simple reason that there is a tremendous, pathetic shortage of good salespeople in the world. The largest, Professor Koshi has said it, so I will take it as absolute fact. He is such a great researcher and scholar that the largest workforce in India is of salespeople. But believe me, most of you feel bad when you go through a particular purchase transaction. you never feel that you are a winner whereas the objective of a sales transaction is a win win kind of a scenario where the sales person feels good because the customer is feeling fantastic now what's happened is it's something very iron in some period the product is already finding its place into the shop shelves the younger untrained rookie sales person finds himself in the fourth brand the only problem is most guys don't want to start with the fourth or the third brand <coughs> If you want to begin with the brand number one, do you think that the senior bosses in brand number one are going to risk putting you in the toughest territory? So you're not going to have what is called baptism by fire, and you need baptism by fire. Some of us have grown up being kicked around, pushed around by our bosses, who actually had their objective very clear: make a champ out of this fellow. We didn't realize it at that time. We were swearing at our bosses. Today we swear by those very bosses. So it's about. youngsters are realizing that they need to be done good but now let's look at it from the other perspective are we in the business of buying mobile phones every day no we are not unless we are dealers for mobile phones are we in the business of buying expensive machinery no we are not so why should we bother ourselves with so much intricate information why not have some expert expert come and solve our in fact in all my sales training sessions i never say go and tell your customer that your product is god's greatest gift to humanity even you are god's greatest gift to humanity tell the customer you have a problem i have a solution and i can take care of it and that's it let the customer sleep in peace not rest in peace <laughs> <laughs> the problem with most of us is me my product my company my boss my bag my price list me whereas even in business and there is a small bookmark given to each one of you which says The only way to to do business is to sell. But if you notice one thing, even in the word business, you comes before I. Yes. So it's always putting the customer first. And if it's about putting the customer first, then I think the sales person needs to be a thinker. He doesn't have to be a gift of the gab, great talking kind of a sales person with the foot in the door. No, they are gone. And that's exactly what all of them want you to be. And that's true. You need to be an expert in your customer's business. Then even in your own business, please pardon me if I make a statement. You may get away with 98% knowledge about your product, but you will not survive if you don't have 120% knowledge of your customer. And I guess Elder I feel sir that the salesperson will never die. On the contrary, the salesperson is going to become a very unique combination 
as a thinker, a listener, an observer, a great communicator, a guy with the biggest heart in the world, a guy with the biggest pair of hands so that he looks after you securely, and a guy with the strongest legs because he needs to cover the territory very quickly, very agile, and also taking care that he doesn't let the ball slip between his feet to go to the boundary. But there are three luminaries that I selected them only for the simple reason I tell you it's a very wicked combination. <laughs> you have someone who has been practicing it, practicing the art at various places, fine tuning it. There's another man, and look, you'll never get such a wonderful combination of a milkman, a chaiwala, and most of you don't know, I'm sure this is. <laughs> okay? And a person who enjoys all three. <laughs> Please. Yes, sir. Mike. First of all, sir, please excuse me. I was just, I am just returning from one body function at some temple, so I am in this dress. So, all good, excuse me. I have, sir, one question. And there is some observation. In which condition joy is more? Attaining the series target by over advertised brand, not possessing the desired or expected quality. Or the someone who selling moderately advertised brand possessing good standard quality. So this is my first part of the question. <laughs> so, we, more as you see that brands are very widely advertised and so in my uh, one Goa convention, I had made some observation which I can only tell you, which I cannot tell you. Second one is, is second part of the question. What you said, sir, regarding Chaiwala. So we are also Chaiwala. So, in which condition joy is more? Say <clears throat> that a leader is also a perceived, uh, you know, value. Uh, he possesses some, some certain type of perceived value. There are two PM candidates now, sir. One is the chief minister. Uh, Mr. Modi and on the other side Mr. Rahul Gandhi. So, <clears throat> whose supporters will discover the joy of selling? <laughs> whose supporters will get the joy of selling? A widely advertised brand or vice versa? Thank you. <laughs> I think if you want joy of selling to be there for longer period, option two is better. Because joy of selling, the first option we are have, you are selling heavily advertised brand with not so high on quality. It will come only once, then you have to leave the job. Because sales are going to decline afterwards. But in case of second option, when you say a moderately advertised but good quality product, reasonably priced, really meet your selling efforts, and you are going to get more satisfaction because whatever it, you will find your own contribution in that. And it is going to improve, and growth is going to come month after month, month after month, and you will feel satisfied. When the first option, one day, because of yesterday, the outside we have seen a product advertised heavily, making so many claims that by eating one spoon of this powder, your son will get 100% pass. <laughs> your brain is so over. And which is actually going not going well. The next year or next month, sales are going to decline. Then you, as a salesman, you will frustrated, you will be blamed that you are not able to achieve. For a salesman, second option is always, always better you enjoy more. Can I add? But, uh, sir, at, sorry, say, at present what we see that, that, uh, you know, before somebody... 
Now, when you are looking at uh, you know marketing, you know there are different disciplines, sub disciplines uh, within that. Uh, you don't uh, call a professor at that sub discipline level. And that is why. In fact, if you look at uh, the people who specialize in sales and distribution, and you cannot call a professor of sales and distribution. So which means that it will be too narrow. Uh, or uh, you know, can't call somebody a professor of brand management or something. Although the person might be specializing in that area. It's not because, uh, in fact, if you look at most of the good business school, each of these uh, sub-disciplines are covered. Pricing, for example, is a very important uh, element. In fact, uh, pricing cuts across uh, basic economics and costing as well as the market side of pricing. So therefore, somebody who teaches that need to have a good grasp of, a grasp of you know, economics, need to have a good grasp of costing and uh, you know, cost allocation, and a good grasp of you know, marketing side. So it's only because of that aggregation uh, uh, that this kind of a thing is happening. Uh, there's no professor of uh, selling. Not because that a particular domain is de-emphasized uh, in, in the field. Did you all, uh, you, you noticed a bookmark on your chair? You must have seen a word that is there on both sides of the, what is the common word? A word. Well, uh, Chandesh Bhai, I'm glad you asked this question because awards is a course by itself. I want to ask all of you one question. I read out this thing called I am a salesman. How many of you would like to have a copy of it? One, two, three, seven, eight and a half. Nine and three quarters. Okay, great. This particular oath, which is as effective as the oath of Hippocrates, is available free with the book. Now you have a professor of sales. Awards is a movement where I encourage each one of you to join. You will find a lot of details about awards. It's a noble movement. It is as good as an institution. And hopefully, Chandesh Bhai, with your support, we create a university of awards. This is not those trophies and things like that. It is a great, great desire that will get fulfilled over a period of time. I'm thankful that you asked this question. Can you just elaborate on uh, that uh, word of the Thank you. Sir, Professor, it is for you. Oh, I was trying to evade it. <laughs> we spent nine Sundays discussing it, didn't we? Okay, fair enough. Yes, how do I understand everybody else's business when I'm not able to figure out my own business is what most salespeople would be thinking. The simple answer, one sentence answer is, just forget what business you are in. It just doesn't matter. What matters is, what is the other person doing? And how you can help take care of sorting out. Look, I want to ask, uh, take my own case. For the last 20 odd years, I have been in the business of, that's what people say, home beautification. Okay? Now, in home beautification, there are many experts as such. There are architects, there are interior designers, there are builders, there are masons, there are painters, there are all kinds of people. If I were to sell to an architect, most salespeople will think, I must make this architect like my tile. But the architect knows tiles better than me. This is a misunderstanding. An architect is not in the business of knowing tiles. An architect is in the business of architecture. To stop. As an architect, how many headaches does he have? And can I reduce 99 headaches to 98 or 97? And that is it. So how do I come in as someone who can relieve this person of one or two of his problems? If you are a fan of Raja Mehdi Ali Khan, the great Shire, he said, other would say, Muhammad hai, to mujhe apne sare gaun de do. Inam Khan ka aare kaasu, mujhe mere sanam de do. The problem is sales people don't want to sing these songs. Yeah. If you don't tell the guy, give me, give me one of your worries and I'll take care of it. You live with the other one, I'll take care of this boy. So you do, you are selling drilling equipment. Let us say, let us say you import drilling equipment from China. Okay? You are not in the business 
of building equipment. A lot of people say, I'm in the business of building equipment. You are actually in the business of probably creating something or excavating something or exploring something or getting into the root of something. And that is where you can tell exactly how your key fits that particular law. Otherwise, like the Victoria 203 heroes who lost their way, they'll have a key in their hand and they'll be looking for locks all over the world. This book tells you exactly how to do that. Okay. I think uh, very difficult to give a one side answer for this. Now, if you if you look at the industry, what is a major uh, problem? You know, if you want to uh, get experienced people in a particular line, then you have to you know fit them in with with the kind of job. Uh, if you look at uh, Eureka Forbes, for example, you know, they pioneered the direct marketing in India. I mean, initially when they started, uh, they didn't have, uh, you know, uh, sales uh, people. And uh, they started one of the most successful uh, programs whereby they picked up basically trainable material, people who had a certain wherewithal to actually succeed. And I trained those, uh, trained those people and were extremely successful and the way in which uh, the very, very segmented, very rigid, you know, systemic way in which they trained actually became a gold standard in the industry in terms of training sales people. This is true in uh, most of the industries, uh, you know, very, very unrelated example, completely unrelated example if you want to know about this. Uh, this comes from my own understanding of I am here. Uh, I don't know how many of you know, this was the second I am established in the country. The first one was in Calcutta, and second in Ahmedabad, and the age difference is one year. Uh, when I am Ahmedabad was started, uh, there were no management faculty anywhere available in this country. No management faculty because there were no PhD programs, there were no management teaching academics as a profession in this country. And therefore, the initial collaboration with Harvard, you had uh, initially people coming from Harvard and you know, and what the institute did was that they picked up bright people who had good postgraduate qualification. And they were seconded to some of the Harvard professors. And they were sent for a shorter program at Harvard Business School for ITP, International Teachers Program. They came back and then on a selective basis, many of them were sponsored for their PhD abroad where the institute picked up their entire expenses. They formed initially, after three, four years, they formed the core of the faculty of IIM Amdaba. Today, there are PhD programs everywhere. And yet, we still go through a very rigorous process of identifying the battle of the talent. Not everybody who has a PhD is you know, likely to be a good academic. So therefore, there are situations where you pick up raw but trainable material, train them, and fit them with the job. There are situations where you look for lateral entry if that fits in, because you want to cover certain distance pretty fast. So there is no single solution for uh, this. Uh, very good morning to the panel. I'm so happy to uh, see all of the distinguished people. Uh, my question is uh, uh, all of you. I am from the field of jewelry. I remember my father and my uncle saying that uh, earlier when we were doing business, People give one kg of gold to us and they say that four bangles banana hai, two ye banana hai, three ye banana hai. Achha lag hai, aisa banana. Today, even after having thousand products in our showroom, still my people are not able to sell. So the whole concept of uh, selling has uh, generated from something different what we had to a different stage. Now there are a lot of new people and old people both coming to us, the generations, two generation gap. 
selling to both this generation is totally different task. The, the old generation which my uncle, my father were handling were on a trust basis. They take the younger people along with them to buy and the younger jo uh, generation is more on a some different part. So, if you can throw some light on this topic and what is the right way to go ahead in this way, I would be very uh, thankful to all of you. One thing, uh, what is a, a jewelry does to the person who owns the jewelry and wears the jewelry? Beautification, yeah. I mean, beautification is a very obvious thing. I think beautification is a very obvious thing. I think uh, what is important is, uh, and each person would like to make a statement about himself or herself. And the more difficult thing is to find out what is that statement that person has to make. And if you are able to understand that, then you have cracked the code. So therefore, the same design might serve two different purposes for two different people. Because I'm wearing it because I want to be this. It is not only, really, please understand when I say this thing, Everybody, it's not important for people to express themselves to other people all the time. They also want to tell something about themselves to themselves. Isn't it? If somebody who buys a high-end, uh, you know, watch, uh, even if the person has money or, you know, what does the person say? No, I mean, I'm a very, very rich person wearing a, you know, a, a diamond studded Rolex. He's not going to make a difference because everybody knows that he's a rich guy. But wearing that, he is actually telling himself that diamond, I can own it. You understand? So therefore, I am a person with a, a certain kind of taste. Why diamond studded, uh, you know, why not a diamond studded Cartier? Why not a diamond studded you know, rado, it depends on the person to express himself. I'm a person who has a refined, evolved taste. Therefore, the trick is, how does a salesman make the test? If you go to some of the very high-end, super luxury retailers in some of the big cities abroad, those people, seldom ask questions to the customer. The customer, because it's a super high luxury, they enter the shop, in fact, the moment they enter the shop, the salesman within a few seconds make an assessment. Is this person going to buy or not? What is the brand of suit he's wearing? What is the type of tie he's wearing? What is the brand of shoes he's wearing? And you make that assessment, you know whether the person has Okay. and then very discreetly follow the person and make an assessment very quietly as to which items is the person's eye is spending more time. In other words, you need to have people who have the ability to okay. That is what is going to make a difference. Okay. Most interesting about your business could be it's something like fragrances. Most people don't buy it for themselves. People buy fragrance to gift it to other people. <coughs> For various reasons. The same fragrance is gifted. <laughs> okay. Because I could give a fragrance to someone in a, in a bid to probably walk down the aisle to the altar to exchange vows. And I could also give a fragrance to a guy and say, you better use it here. <laughs> so, so, it all depends on who the person is. What is the need and where exactly that person stands? Professor Koshi wants to add a point to that. Now just a quick caution about what he said about fragrance. If you're buying a fragrance for the opposite gender, it is understandable. If you're buying a you know, uh, fragrance, if you're a male for another male, then be very, very, very discreet in you know, doing it. Because interpretations are very different. <laughs>
selling on me. <laughs> Okay, wonderful. Yeah, property.